Hello friends, this video on respiration in plants part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We will now talk about the next way in which pyruvic acid can be utilized because as I said glycolysis will remain the first step for anaerobic respiration as well. But after glycolysis you are left with pyruvic acid. So how can you utilize pyruvic acid by fermentation? So that is what we will see now. So before we talk about uh, how pyruvic acid is handled, first let us see what is fermentation. So the name fermentation, it, it must be quite familiar to you. You often, whenever you talk about fermentation, you would have heard of ferment, the process of fermentation being used to make wines, to make beers, to make yogurt. So they are all fermentation plays a role. So today let us see what it is. It is a metabolic process that can convert sugars into acids or alcohols. So now the process of fermentation as such is a natural process. However, these days the artificial process have also been brought into picture in order to, in, in order to use it commercially. So this occurs under anaerobic conditions. So when I say anaerobic condition, I mean absence of oxygen. So we do not need oxygen for this process to take place. But the demerit is that in this process, alcohol or acids will be produced, which are not very, I mean, they can be harmful when they are present in large concentration inside a living organism. What happens during this process is that incomplete oxidation of glucose takes place. Now, the first step that is glycolysis remain the same. So, glucose gets converted into pyruvic acid or pyruvate. Now, in case of aerobic respiration, pyruvate gets completely oxidized. But in case of fermentation, that pyruvate will be incompletely oxidized. Complete oxidation is not possible in this case. Now the question is where does fermentation occur? Where do we see this fermentation happening? It is most, uh, mostly it happens in case of microorganisms like bacteria and yeast which leaves under anaerobic conditions. It is also seen in oxygen starved animal muscle cells. For example, when somebody is doing a lot of exercise, vigorous exercise, they need, suddenly they need a lot of energy. Maybe that much of energy is not there inside the body. So from where will that extra energy come? So that extra energy comes from the process of anaerobic respiration. So because that time not too much of oxygen is available to the muscle cells. So anaerobic respiration happens, lactic acid is formed and that provides the energy which is required at that instant of time. So these are some of the situations where anaerobic respiration or fermentation is seen to occur. There are broadly two types of fermentation that is alcohol fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. So let us quickly see what is alcohol fermentation and what is lactic acid fermentation. As the name itself says alcohol fermentation would be the one where alcohol is formed and lactic acid fermentation is going to be the one where an acid is formed. So let us talk about alcohol fermentation. So here the starting material is a pyruvic acid that is the product of glycolysis. So that would be the starting material in this case. So what happens is there is an enzyme called pyruvic acid decarboxylase and another enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. So wherever you have an enzyme decarboxylase it will try to snatch away carbon dioxide from that compound. So what happens here is this is your pyruvic acid so pyruvic acid in presence of all these enzymes, this forms ethanol that is C2H5OH plus CO2. So CO2 is released and ethanol which is an alcohol is formed. And during this process, decarboxylation happens because if you talk about pyruvic acid, pyruvic acid is a three carbon compound. So you are basically snatching out carbon dioxide. So that is the role of pyruvic acid decarboxylase to make decarboxylation happen. And what is the purpose of alcohol dehydrogenase? This actually helps in the process of oxidation. So NADH is converted into NAD plus and those energy is utilized to form this ethanol. So dehydrogenase helps in that oxidation part. So this type of alcohol fermentation is used for producing wine, beer and yogurt. 
So if you look at this, during this process, there is no electron transport chain because no oxygen is present. So electron transport chain cannot take place because oxygen is the final electron acceptor there. So in this case, again, the process of glycolysis would need NAD+. So basically, during this process, the NAD+, is newly generated. In aerobic respiration also, during the process of glycolysis, NAD plus was utilized. So somebody needs to regenerate NAD plus. In case of aerobic respiration, that was done by electron transport chain. Here there is no electron transport chain. So NAD plus regeneration is also done in this step itself. Right. So if you look at this step of alcohol fermentation, basically no ATP is formed at all. So the product here is ethanol and carbon dioxide. So if you talk about energy in terms of energy, no ATP molecules are formed in this step. So if you talk about the entire process of alcohol fermentation, the first step was glycolysis where two ATP molecules were formed and the next step is alcohol fermentation where nothing is formed. So the net output is just two ATP molecules which is very very less when compared to the output of aerobic respiration. Let us look at the next type of fermentation that is lactic acid fermentation. Here the starting material again is going to be pyruvic acid. The enzyme is different here. The enzyme is lactate dehydrogenase and therefore the product is also different. So here lactic acid will be formed. So a similar type of reaction again. So pyruvic acid gets converted into lactic acid and during the course of this process NAD plus is regenerated which can be utilized during the process of glycolysis because since in this case in anaerobic respiration at least glycolysis is producing some energy in the form of two ATP molecules so if this process also stops working no ATP will be produced at all therefore it is better to keep this process running and in order to do that NAD plus needs to be regenerated and that regeneration is done during lactic acid fermentation. So this is generally seen in the muscle cells of animals when you do vigorous exercise and that sudden uh, need of energy is fulfilled by this lactic acid fermentation method. So now if you look at the net ATP yield in anaerobic respiration, what do you see? So we started with glucose. So glucose will first undergo the process of glycolysis and it will form pyruvic acid. Now, by the time it undergoes this glycolysis, what happens? Two ATP molecules are formed. Now, it can either undergo lactic acid fermentation or it can undergo alcohol fermentation. In both of these cases, no ATP molecules are formed. Therefore, the net ATP molecules that are formed in anaerobic respiration is two molecules of ATP. And here you can see that during the process of uh, glycolysis, NAD plus is required. So who will provide this NAD plus? This NAD plus is produced during this fermentation process so that they can be utilized during glycolysis. Whereas in case of uh, the electron transport chain, when the NADH combined with complex 1, you remember NADH combined with complex 1, it produced the H plus ions and the electrons. That time it got converted into NAD plus and that NAD plus was further utilized for glycolysis. That is how it was done in case of aerobic respiration. But here since there is no electron transport chain, so it has to be taken care here itself. So this is how an aerobic respiration takes place and you can just imagine how much difference is there in the output of aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.